have been non-stop since 10 a.m. It, it is like past 4 p.m. at this point. Um, but I had melee doubles, and then I had Splatoon, and then I had melee, and now we're <laughs> here. Ah, okay. <laughs> here um, we go. But uh, we have got a match from Wave D Pools here for you between Clean Bath TUB and Getting Splatty. And uh, we, we, <laughs> we were looking at the information packets, and we noticed that we have information on getting splatty. We, we have Wumi Matsu, a splatling and tri slosher player, so I'm assuming that that's going to be. I think the game's going to start soon, so we're probably. running out of time. <laughs> We've got an ink brush and possible tri stringer, so. Two ink already, brushes, potentially. Al already going to be seeing some interesting comps here. I'm very curious to see what it ends up being. But uh, we don't have much we can say about Clean Bathtub because they didn't submit anything. Well, one I know, I think, oh, well, I thought I knew. It's it's different now. Never mind, I do not know. I thought I knew. Oh, so Tent and we're, here's we're, a tri -stringer. We're shaking our fingers at them, but we will commentate them with mostly <laughs> a lack of bias nonetheless. Ooh. Rolling out here, we've got a Charger on one side, Tri Stringer on another. There is a Tent out, and so that is going to have a pretty significant impact on especially how this map plays with how narrow it is, how many choke points there are. This is one of the favored temp maps. Let's see if this tri slasher can do anything about it, though. Sloshing up over the top is one of the ways that you can handle it. Yeah, the Nautilus able to try to come follow up behind. The tent does go down. We see three members of uh, Clean Bath just kind of swooping in and uh, taking three down. They have quite the advantage here. But I saw that the bow is behind them here, trying to get uh, darts out over by the Rainmaker, but does have to flee. They're going out. We see Inkjet over top, just trying to pick off a couple members. It looks like they do get one. More points are, points are able to go down. They stop it. That oh. splashdown wow. did some work to help stall. But I think this is just going to be over. <laughs> Clean bathtub <laughs> keeping them extremely honest. Basically, every there were a lot of tricks that we saw getting Splatty pull out. We had, you know, the tent to start with, which is, you know, a, a matchup that you really have to know to be able to handle. They handled it quite well. Then they had the tri-stringer trying to trail out and get some stray picks on the side where they could, but that got zoned out. The special push was immaculate. Nobody went down. Just super, super clean from the bathtub. Mm -hmm. I do with, even though, you know, uh, clean bathtub still, you know, didn't fill out the form, give us information. Of course, the information we can gather is also when we run into them, when we play against them. And a couple of the players on uh, clean bathtub I've definitely run into, so I can tell that they are strong players. So there's going to be a lot of uh, just for, like offense. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> and we saw that in that game. Just three of them moved up, got the three down. There was only the one left. The bow ended up uh, taking the back route and actually trying to go around from behind to try to pick off something there before they had to escape. And I mean, that takes a lot. Just if you're at an angle and you think you can get it, it's worth a shot and then just go right on back to go defense. So yeah. worth a shot from the bow there and they did stay alive. A really pretty destructive splashdown that yep. their Nautilus was able to snag there. And because of that, there just wasn't really much defending. Like, sure, they got the Rainmaker at one point, but with that many players in your base and, you know, people jumping back in, it, it was only a matter of time. So the, the one chance I think they had was stopping it with the Zuka play at the end. But I will say, I think getting Splatty here, if they keep their focus, they've definitely got more of a chance than it looked from that game because I think uh, they basically lost one fight and then got surprised by a special, and that that's mm -hmm. it. That's a Rainmaker mm -hmm. KO, right? But in a slower game mode especially, they're going to have more chances to come back in, more chances to feel out clean bathtub. Um, you know, maybe get out the sponge, scrub some mold out of the corners. <laughs> and uh, I'd be like, it'd be funny if they had a blob lover for that, but they do have ink brushes handy that we haven't seen on that team. So you never know. We'll see what happens when they, uh, for this map mode here for ship shape tower control. They were excited to list those. Those are the first weapons on two of the players' uh -huh. weapon pools there. But we're not, we haven't seen them yet, so I don't know. I don't know. Almost exactly the same comp. I, I think they swapped out. No, no, they didn't swap out. I think it's exactly the same comp coming out from uh, Clean Bathtub. Yep. And then on the other side, Z Double Cooler. They're running Double Cooler on they Tower are here. Double Cooler, yep. They want to really make sure that they can stay in the match if they go down and have one cooler and then another cooler at the ready. 
even if they die, they just want to be right on back so they can keep the force. And it's so far, they've got one down, two down. Right now, the advantage is in the side of oh. Bathtub. They're pushing forward. And they did get that wipe there. So first checkpoint should be secured here. The Charger did jump on back. And look at this, just double special here. Splashdown clearing up the left. We got the Inkjet blocking off this top right. Is able to get that one shot and stay wow. alive and wipe again. That was disgusting. So what keeps happening here is Clean Bathtub are taking space that Getting Splatty are not contesting. Getting Splatty will not like push out quite as far in neutral. And so then Clean Bathtub takes that space, and as soon as they win a fight, they're already in their base. They're already locking them out. There aren't any good defensive positions left. So they're snowballing really fast off the basis of just... Uh, what? Um, Two? Are you kidding me? How does this happen? Uh, I, I think we know how it happens, but we're not mentioning how what happened. Oh, goodness. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Wow. Um, so... We will wait I mean, and see what happens here. That was definitely, like, not a match that I think they were super likely to win there. Um, it, you know, you can, you can talk about what might have happened if those players hadn't DC'd, but also they kind of got wiped twice in a yeah. row. Um, you can only wipe so many times, and wiping consecutively is the, obviously the fastest way to lose a game of Splatoon. Mm -hmm. um, great zone control, I would say, from Clean Bathtub. Like, they're moving in exactly when they have resources, and they're also tending to catch getting Splatty bunched up a little bit. Um, they're finding opportunities to use, like, the AoE from the tri Slosher. And also the, you know, the inkjet is going to force people out of position. The inkjet's going to be really nasty for pushing them into a formation like that. So I want to see getting Splatty spreading out a little bit and also just doing a little bit more to prevent Clean Bathtub from moving up for free. Um, I want to see them, like, have to face resistance before they can drop out of, say, mid on ship shape into the enemy side. Like, that zone should really be under control for the team that's defending if none of them have gone down yet or there aren't specials in the air. And they kind of just ended up backing up into their own choke and getting stuck. Long time ago, uh, back when uh, I subbed for a group, and it was kind of in a scenario where we were getting pushed back. It's just like the best thing you can do is, you know, be patient. If they're going to get points, they get points. But make sure that you are defending when you know you have your resources and stuff and can actually fully, truly defend rather than rushing in with nothing at all. That way you have uh, backup. And fun fact, that was Popgun who told me that ages mm -hmm. ago back when we were first learning Comp Splatoon. And it does come in handy. Sometimes the other team, like if you're in the middle of a game, they'll get lead, but sometimes they will because you have nothing to stop it because if you go and stop it at that time, you're going to all die and they're just going to end up getting more points. So just stop it when you know you can just take a breather, just regroup, look at where they potentially are, what could be coming at you, and you can just prepare yourself. And sometimes, like, it'll succeed more, but there is still chance of failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you have to really choose when to commit, but then you've got to commit 100%, because mm -hmm. if that's the chance that you're picking, then that's the chance that you need to make work. That's where you want to use your resources. That's where you need to get everyone on the same page. Um, and it's entirely possible, you know, based on what we've been seeing, that Getting Splatty is trying to just say, hey, this is the fight we're taking. We've got a good shot here. Let's go for it. And they're getting outplayed for it. And sometimes that's just, you know, the way the game works. But uh, hopefully they haven't let the, you know, the DCs, haven't let the situation that they're in rattle them, that they're able to take a breather and uh, get back into this game three here and uh, be able to make something of a comeback, figure out how to execute a game plan, something like that. But uh, Clean Bathtub has been looking like they're looking for the a clean sweep. <laughs> pun intended. Uh <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's gonna I don't pun by All mistake. Oh, I, know. I do it on purpose. I'm, I'm sure most people do. And this is when we go... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Minus 10 points to anyone who doesn't like my pun in chat. <laughs> Debbie will not stand for this anymore. Good. Okay, excellent. Good job, excellent, chat. Excellent. Good job. We Good job, Jordan. You. Good job. <laughs>
<laughs> if you know, uh, you know. Uh, but we are going to be prepping for game three. Now, we never had a chance to actually play this game three because we had a buy round one when we played. So we're get to actually see Clan Blitz, Barnacle, and Dying be played. If, uh, what is it, getting getting Splatty can bring out similar comp that they had to the Rainmaker Undertow because it's got a wide middle. Um, they just have to really be careful of those choke points when the faster weapons can come behind them and just sneak up and pinch in the three-way like they have been with the first specials. This is really scary because Clan Blitz is one of the slower modes, but I think this is really one that can snowball pretty hard. Um, it's very much, yeah, very similar comp that we've seen before. Um, we do have the Ink Rush out here. Ink we'll, Rush. we'll see how much they can get done. This is a pretty narrow map, but they wanted to, you know, go down with at least an Ink Rush representation. So let's see what they can do with it. Um, there you go. Interesting to note is that the ball point on the other team is running Thermal Ink. I do see here and there Thermal Ink Splatlings being played from time to time. I do think the the bow had it before as well. I think it's the same player. You see the brush going down, but it is a one for one trade. The blaster coming in to get a pick as well on the side, I think, and ball point as well. That's three down now on the side of clean bathtub. Awesome start here for getting Splatty. Um, this is, you know, like I said, it didn't seem like they were necessarily getting run over completely in every situation. It just felt like there were a couple of really well executed fights from clean bathtub. But if getting Splatty are able to fight back like this, you know, given the chance, to get wiped out there. But if they're able to pull together another couple of those fights, it could be a lot closer than we've seen so far. So far though, oh, Aang is getting so far up there and they're, they're trying not to give up the high ground. They're not going to drop and go after those players on the right. They're just, they want the base. They're going to splash down in the base and get several. Wow. Just absolute efficiency here. Everyone goes down exactly when Clean Bathtub wants them to. Mm -hmm. The nice thing, though, is that, like, getting Splatty, they didn't rush into it there when the Nautilus was up there, but they just didn't have um, the timing there to keep it back or realize, like, it was still going to go there or realize it was going to go forth. Um, and that someone could come up in behind. They were being patient coming back in there, but unfortunately the Knot was able to make it across and get that splash down. A couple decent trades here. Clean Bathtub are holding the base, but they did lose the basket. So even with a couple of picks going down here, great shot from Sunny D we just saw, they still don't have the win yet. They haven't made their way all the way in, and they're still going to need to make a power climb before they can move forward. But with two players down on the defense, that's not going to be as hard anymore. Make that three, and they're back in and they just need to relay the clams a little better than they did last time, and this could potentially be a KO. Vapor's going back to get some more. We've got Sunny D moving up to hit some charger shots and also stall the basket. Pretty textbook right here. They're not even trying to contest this side here. They've got all three members of Clean Bathtub in that spot, but getting Splatty opting to come in from the left, it pays off to get two. They still need to clear Sunny D out, but there is a jump coming. Do they choose between the jump? Okay, Sunny D misses. The jump. There was definitely an opportunity for Clean Bathtub to stay in there even then, but uh, doesn't quite pan out. Even so, the Bathtub cannot be feeling too bad about this. They're still in the enemy pit. They're just kind of going for kills at this point. Like, there just hasn't been enough of a push out of the base. Um, it feels like they're trickling in a little bit. They're not maybe not respecting how close the attackers are going to be to their spawn and figuring maybe that somewhere is safe when it's not. And uh, Clean Bathtub are finally able to shut it down. Took them three pushes to get through instead of, you know, one, one, one protracted zero to 100. But the result is no different on the end screen. Judd is still deciding that Clean Bathtub is advancing. Yeah, it was interesting because um, Clean Bathtub, of course, they knew that they had the lockout. They would rotate people. Um, it was just keeping up with the clam economy. Like, they, they kept, uh, I think, the three of them were up there and one would typically go back for clams. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, they definitely had the, the power and they had the angles right. They, they knew their angles where they were going. Of course, we could see the charter positions and the, the, like the top corners that they could hit. Um, they were ready for that to keep that on guard. It's just the, the, the clam economy there was not in their favor to keep that potential uh, one-hit KO push that they probably could have went for. But it did take them three tries. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, I think a part of the reason that they were able to lock out as hard as they did was that they had so many players forward and able to stuff the defense as it came back in. Um, it might just be that they opted to go a little bit on the slower side in terms of scoring because they knew that it meant they could keep map control and that that would allow them to keep going. Or they were just going for kills. Who, who knows? Um, we, we don't have any information on them. They, there's a blank spot on the page 
where their their team's information was going to be. So who's to say? They, they're an enigma to me. However, <laughs> they have played a very good set of Splatoon, and they will be advancing at least to the redemption bracket. Um, I believe the way it works is that uh, if you win one, then you go to redemption, and if you win all three, all, or all, t all two, um, then you are a lock it for be, top 24. Yeah, it... Would, it uh yeah, they do the three because it is of three rounds. Most teams will have three. Some teams start with a bye, like we did. So you only have two games. But mm -hmm. it is of of the three. Oh, true. That's why. Yep. Yep. Forgot about that. So we were the one, one of the ones that started with a bye. So, so is it that you had to go two and one to make redemption then? Yes. That would make more sense. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So format and stuff aside, they you always want to be winning the sets. If you just keep winning sets, who cares what the format is, right? You're, you're going to keep going anyway. You just do that long enough and you'll win the tournament. Easy. <laughs> then you don't have to use your brain that much. Yeah, just keep winning and you know where you're going to be. <laughs> Simply win. <laughs> if you don't, then just, you know, check, check the schedule and pings and... Yeah, you know, let, let, let the going. TOs do all the work for you then, I Unless guess. Unless if they forget to put you on the list and then you have to double check it where you actually are. Well, <laughs> I, I trust the TOs. I, I trust Siren. I trust Magic. Oh, yeah, no. I I, it's, it's all good. Sometimes it's just a little miss. And they're, I mean, I get that. People. I they, get that. They know, how to, they know how to do things. Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. We all know how to do certain things. Other things, maybe not, but you know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I think Siren knows how to do everything. I'm just saying. It, all the TOs just have all this power within them of, yes. of skills that you never knew that some some people might not like show that before meeting them. Then all of a sudden, it's just like, whoa, how do you do this? <laughs> have you gone to, um, I know you guys went out to eat a couple of times. I'm just wondering if there are any other restaurants that, that we need to visit here. Uh, uh, well, we Yesterday was quite the tour. <laughs> 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 well, we tried uh, one barbecue place, but it was lined up like crazy, probably about a good hour, hour and a half. And yeah. then we tried a then we tried a little sushi joint. We even made a reservation, but it still took it was twenty minutes until like it was close to ready, not even. Oh wow. So at that point in time it was just like it's getting close to badge pickup being ending, we need to go. So we ended up coming to get badges. Oh, oh man. And then we didn't end up going anywhere fancy at all but i know that uh what was it because we were going to initially we were going to go to terry black's and i've been to one before it is top-notch barbecue okay so nice yeah nice <laughs> Wait, and that's got kind of ruined oh and we then we tried to go to a kind of a uh, like a pub place but their kitchen closed down mm. so we were kind of out of luck. Wow, that, that is the also, unluckiest dinner trip I've ever heard of. All to like health restrictions and all that. And then with transportation, of course, not all of us can fit in the cars and some of us had to Uber. And uh, well, me and uh, me and Crony, we got we waited to get picked up again. We at least saw a little fireworks show at the last oh, place. That's cool. So that was kind of neat. That's cool. So something came out of it. But then we just ended up ordering fast food and that was the night. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna, I was just gonna say, that we, remind you, we are in Texas, so the barbecue here, <laughs> is, th this is where you go if you want barbecue. Yes. <laughs> it's yes, it is. It's just even even like your your normal run of the mill barbecue place in Texas is just uh, it's so much food and it's all so good and uh, I, that 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 alone is is a reason to come here honestly, but. Um, I was just looking for suggestions because, uh, you know, it's it's a resort, so the food's gonna be expensive, and if you can and never you wanna go off, right? Thing, yeah, yeah. If you can ever go and find something that's like the same price, but outside, that means it's gonna be like really good. It's gonna you're be. Gonna, you're gonna pay that much money for your food anyway. Yeah, might as, might and as it's well like be. we found <laughs> those two places. Like there was like that little sushi place, like Terry, like the Terry Box, but it just really. Full at the time we could, just due to you know plane times changing, and it just kind of, it kind of messed up the whole evening in the end. But you know we made it work there and go throughout. But uh, there is still like a good few places here, and they actually made like a chat of places to check out while okay. here as well. Okay. Uh, there's there's a fancy apparently there's a fancy donut place 
here that I've, I've, I've seen actually, uh, so many things about. Uh, Reborn got that for us last year. Oh. Um, it, it was, it was a, it's a donut that's like the size of a cake. Oh my God. It's huge. And so he just bought one of those, and the four of us split it, and we still had like two servings of it left oh over. Oh my God. It was massive. It was a pretty good donut. It was Worth like, it though? Considering. Granted, like, it must be difficult to make a donut that's that big yeah. and to have it, like, cooked evenly and everything, but they did a really good job. It, it just tasted like a normal donut and not something that was, like, undercooked in one part and burnt oh. somewhere else. Because I feel like that if I tried to do it, that's probably what would happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are not easy things at all, but it, that's a, that was a place that's just, like, ooh, interesting. It's just, like, if there's time at some point, like, on whenever, so, whenever people have time. I know some schedules are quite jam-packed, like <laughs> yours was. Yeah. And we're still going. Quite jam-packed. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, Chad, I did do that on purpose. It do be like that. Suffer my puns. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, worth place to, to check out there, of course. Uh, this will be on the bonus question of, of, the, of the homework test. Right, which, pun, right. which puns did you like the most? Yes, you get extra credit if you answer correctly. <laughs> That's such, just the look. Just the look. It will hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to. They come to my class. Oh. <laughs> They're trapped. <laughs> oh, dear. We're turning this into those games now. <laughs> as, a, as a person who plays Danganronpa and all that. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get murdered, most Good. of them. It can't guarantee that in Splatoon, but, you know. They I might mean, get slatted. Sometimes you just, you just have to hit them with a hammer or something, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> what, what else are you supposed to do in the video game? Like, they're, they're just there, and they're so so hittable with a hammer. Okay. So. You just get them back. That's what you do. You just learn how it goes, what the hitbox is, and just get them right back and do, be do, like, or you Or you, like, go around the side and shoot them in the side, because that's how you splat an ultra stamp. That sometimes or just works. be a ranged I don't play weapon ultra and just stamp. fight it straight on and yeah. hope for the best. I don't play ultra stamp. I usually just get splatted out of it, so... <laughs> It's not a very high percentage play, but it is very exciting when it does work. <laughs> Fair. Fair. <laughs> so, um, for, for those who, who might be wondering, um, we played on the same team for the content, and so we, are, we had a bye in our first round, and then we won one match, lost one match, which puts us into the redemption bracket. So that's where we're currently sitting. Well, we technically won two. I mean, well, we got uh, the buy means we got got to win. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we we won by existing. We we won by being here materially in in person and the other team not existing. Um, them being theoretical, hypothetical, if you will. Um, them being immaterial, intangible, uh, ghost-like, perhaps. Yes. There's your vocabulary lesson for the day. You're welcome, everybody. Um, but yes, so we, we were able to win one without needing the advantage of existence. Our opponents actually did exist on that one. Uh, and then after that, um, that lands us at the 2-1 record that we needed for redemption. So we'll be back playing in a, a few hours from now. Yep. As if the day wasn't already long enough. But hey, that, it's a two-day event. They got to get a lot done. So it makes it sense. It goes by fast, though. It like, does. Just, just in no time. Because you're always having fun. You're always visiting with somebody. You meet people who you've, you know, known for so long. And it's just like you see them in person. And then sometimes, like, you know, you realize, hey, this is said person. Just like, wait, that's you? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That, that happens so much. Like, um Someone, you know, from stream chat, someone we played against, someone that we've, like, seen their name a billion times.